Hello. Hello, Jack. Hello. Hi, my name is New. New. Good yeah. to meet you, New. How are you? Okay. You're a teacher? Yes. Good. How wonderful. You're doing such a good job with your students. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, there's the, yeah, we really appreciate your um, hard work for over the, such a long time. Oh, it's a labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy it. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Your students are wonderful. Okay, thank you. Uh, new, I have been um, in the speaking classes. I'd ask everybody to turn their cameras on. Yes. Uh, now, I don't think that's as important because, oh, hey there. Hey, what's Hi, your... this is my baby. Can you say hello to him? Hello. Hello. Hello from the United States. What's your name? Len, what's your name? My name's Len. Len. This okay. is her nickname. Hello, Len. I'm Jack. Nice to meet you. Can, can, you, say, nice can you? you say hi, Jack? <laughs> sorry, this is, sorry. I put that, so she doesn't hear you. <laughs> That's okay. So I think it's, um, I'm going to ask people that if they want to talk to turn on their cameras. Otherwise, I don't think it's necessary because I don't know how many people we're going to have in this class. Do you know how many people are going to be here? Um, so I, I think it's to open to that, everybody, right? According to their registration, we have about 190 uh, students tonight. Oh, because okay. I told you that uh, this session is open for all students, but um, mm -hmm. we invite um, <coughs> two groups of the students from the, uh, let's say, the third year and the fourth year um, as a core group, and then we welcome other students as well. Right, and so far it's about 190 students um, registered. Okay, so for 190 students, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them that um, if they want to speak, they are welcome to speak at any time, but if they want to speak, to turn their cameras on. So maybe you could explain that in Vietnamese once class begins. Okay, right. What? So let's see from... Um, from our experience with, um, with your speaking class, and then we already mm -hmm. recommend them to be kind of to be ready to turn on the camera. 
Good. Um, okay. But I'm not quite sure if um, they are ready for that or not. So let me yeah. share with them when more people come, more mm -hmm. students come. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, it's not important that everybody turn their cameras on today because with 190 students, yeah. um, that, you know, I can't see 190 people at a time. I can only see about 25 students at a time. So it's not so important that they turn it on this time. But if they want to speak, I would like to see who is speaking. Oh, I yeah. like the bunny ears. <laughs> That's great. Hello, Hello. Huyen Trung. <laughs> yes, hi, Chuck. <laughs> hi. How are you? <laughs> well, I'm. I don't. I'm not feeling like a bunny today because for me it's still the morning, <laughs> and I'm still drinking my coffee. <laughs> yes. So new. Uh, today, uh, well, for the workshops, I'm going to do most of the presenting. If they want to speak, they're always welcome to speak, but um, probably we won't be able to have, you know, a lot of student participation just because of the, the number of students. Okay. But... Um, also, I am going to show them um, how they can um, use a virtual background. And if you want to help me with that, you're welcome to help me explain to them how to use a virtual background. So students, if you want to use a virtual background or a filter like Huyen Trung is using, um, what you do is you go down to your camera icon and click the little arrow right beside the camera icon. And then you choose virtual background. And then you go to th this window and you, you click what you want. Okay. But the way to begin is to click this little arrow beside your camera. And I'll show you what that looks like. If I want to go to the beach, I can go to the beach. Okay. Hello from the beach. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> or I can go to outer space. Hello from outer space. Wow, anyway, amazing. <laughs> you can do this too. All you have to do is click that little arrow. I can be an insect in the grass. I can go to San Francisco. I can look at the Aurora Borealis, but the beach is my favorite. Okay, staycation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, all right. So I'm not quite sure how, how um, the students, are you doing well with the virtual background? Mẹ em có làm, có đổi được không? Không muốn đổi không? Có đổi được không? Dạ, em đổi được rồi. All right, go. Um, so some I can do my, it and some can't. Parents, I can't do it. I don't know why. I did the same way. I mean, the same stuff as you show um, the students that, but I didn't. Okay. Um, I, um, to, right, I go to the video, I choose a virtual background, and I click uh -huh. on one um, background, virtual background um, uh -huh. here on my screen, but then I don't know what next to do. So Could you maybe double click it? Maybe double click it. No. Do you see the virtual backgrounds? Yes, I do. But I have only uh, three options to choose from. One with the, okay. uh, the San Francisco Golden Bridge. The uh -huh. second one with the grass and the third one is with the, the star at night. And I choose any of them, but nothing happened. And you're on, you're, you're clicked on this virtual backgrounds, right? Sorry. 
you you clicked on virtual backgrounds here. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the CI because I. Yes. Okay, not video filters, but virtual uh, backgrounds. No, I don't have the tab with the video filters. No. Okay. Is uh, mirror my video on? Sorry. Mirror my video is that on? Um. Oh, let me see. Oh no. I didn't choose it, this one. So. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be on, really. Should I should I click on the I have a green screen as well? Or no, 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 no. No, that's uh, that's if you have a studio with a screen behind you. No, I don't, you don't know why I can't, huh. uh, unclick it. <laughs> well, I think it, it might depend on your operating system. Some of I your think? students have told me that, uh, oh, but look at Huyen Trung. She just got a virtual background. <laughs> Huyen Trung, what, what kind yeah, of op yes, but, what operating cannot, system are you using? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm using MacBook, but I don't know, like... MacBook? Uh, yes. Okay. And Nu, are you using MacBook? Yes. Okay, so Huyen, maybe you could help Nu and anybody else with the virtual background, telling them how to do it? Um, yeah, but I think like I cannot see my face if I choose uh, the virtual background. Well, I think it's because you have um, video <laughs> filters and virtual background on. If you turn off filters. No, actually, no. If I uh, turn off the, you know, filter video is still like uh, you cannot see my face if I choose virtual background. But Let right now, your virtual filter is on. Your video filter is on. Can you turn it off? Yep, yep. And see what happens? Go go to yes. none? I turn it off already. Oh, OK. Huh. Yeah. OK. Well, no, I. Don't worry about um, my uh, problem then. So I'll work it out later then. Really. OK. Uh, Duan Trung, it, she has a virtual background. Duan Trung, what, what, uh, are you using a MacBook? I'm Duan, a bit, bit. Uh, Duan yeah, Trung, yeah. okay. So she's using a virtual background. Yeah, I use laptop. Okay, and we can see her face. So that's interesting. Okay, well, you guys can work that out um, when you have time. <coughs> For me, if I want to use a virtual background, I go to the camera icon to the right and click this little arrow, choose virtual background, and then I get to this screen and I choose a virtual background and it will do it for me. But if it doesn't do it for you, then maybe you could get some help after class or something. Yes. Okay. Okay, everybody, welcome to class. I'm excited that you're here. And uh, we're going to talk about cultural differences between Vietnam and the United States today. And I am going to record this um, and then I will put it up on my YouTube channel. So this is the forum saying that it's okay with you if we record you and put you on uh, the YouTube um, video and it's just for your university. Okay, so um, I hope everybody is okay with that. Um, if you uh, want, if, I encourage you to turn your camera on, but it's okay if you don't. You can use a virtual background or not, but if you want to speak, you, may, you can speak at any time. I, I encourage you to speak. <laughs> I like it when students talk. So if you talk, please turn your camera on when you talk, okay? Or you can just turn your camera on and leave it on. That's fine too. 
Okay, well, we're going to get started. The first thing that I want to talk about is, uh, let me go to, all right, let me minimize you. Let me close you. The first thing I want to talk about when we talk about cultural differences, um, let me just, um, let me just uh, read this to you. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to play a game and have a poll. A poll is when I ask you questions and, and you give me your opinion. It, there's no right or wrong answers. It's just asking you your opinion. Okay, so um, I'm going to record this and post it on YouTube. So if you want to um, later after class, after like tomorrow, actually for you tomorrow, the video will be on my YouTube channel. If you want to play the video and think about it more and discuss it with your family and friends, you can do that. Um, I want to introduce you to this phrase. And this is Latin. This is Latin, okay? Caveat emptor. It means buyer beware. And what I mean by that is when you talk about Excuse me just one minute. Um, it means buyer beware. And I'll let me put that in chat. Okay. Buyer beware. It means if you're going to buy a house, it is your job to look at the house carefully and make sure that there are no problems with the house, okay? And when we talk about culture, you have to be very careful where you get your information, okay? Because um, just because you read it on the internet, <laughs> on the web, does not mean that it is true, okay? <laughs> so, um. I'm going to ask you to use critical thinking and consider the source of the information carefully. Okay, does it come from, you know, uh, the Vietnamese government? Does it come from a newspaper that you trust? Does it come from somebody that you don't know? you've never heard of before. So consider where that information comes from because there are lots of people who will go on the internet and they'll say, oh, all Vietnamese are like this or all Americans are like that. And that's just not true, okay? <laughs> you know that not all Vietnamese people are the same and not all Americans are the same. So be careful. Okay, um, much of the information online is completely untrue or partially true or sometimes true. Okay, it's not always true. <laughs> Don't believe everything you read, okay? So good, I like your hat. Uh, find sources that you trust. Okay, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you two sources of information that I trust. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> now it's pig ears, that's great. <laughs> okay, let me just give you an example of two sources of information that I trust. Um, I trust let me see if I can share this with you. I trust this newspaper because um, when what I read, 
I usually believe, not 100%, but usually I believe what the New York Times says. And another source of information that I trust is this newspaper, the Washington Post. So for me, those are two sources of information that when I read the information there, I trust it. Okay, the New York Times, the Washington Post, there's lots of others. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I try to get my information from more than one place. And I do read a lot and I inform myself. But um, I don't believe everything that I read. Okay, so let me go back and share something with you. Okay, um, I want to talk about crass generalizations. Okay, um, that that's that's a bad thing to generalize. That's when you say all Vietnamese people are like this, or all Americans are like this. Well, that's just not true, because we're not all the same. Okay. Some people will say, well, people in the North are blah, 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 okay? Or the all the people in the South are blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not true either. So learn how to use words like perceived by some people to be, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, don't use language that is black and white, okay? By black and white, I mean, uh, if you say, you know, um, uh, all Americans are stupid. Um, okay, so that that's black and white language. Learn to be kind with your descriptions of others. Okay, be truthful, but practice tolerance. Tolerance is when you say, well, I don't believe the same that you believe, but it's okay for you to believe what you believe. Okay, that's tolerance. We need more tolerance in the world. Know your audience. In other words, know who you're talking to and be careful when you say things, okay? Use your perspective wisely. So if you're Vietnamese and you're talking about Americans to your Vietnamese friend, you might choose language that's different than if you're talking about Americans to an American, okay? You might be a little more careful. And um, okay, so all in all, I'm saying be careful when you read and see information on the internet. It is not all true, okay? Be careful. Um, find sources that you trust. And then also be nice. <laughs> <clears throat> when you talk about other people and other cultures, be kind. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing that. And I'm going to, let me see. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to play a Kahoot, and it's going to be a poll. In other words, um, these are going to be questions. There's no correct answer because it's asking for your opinion, how you feel, how you believe, okay? So if you know how to play Kahoot, um, you can go ahead and sign on now. Uh, and let me adjust the volume. Well, let me see what's going on with Kahoot. Here we go. Okay. 
So if you want to know how to play, um, you go to www.kahoot.it. Dot it and then you enter this game pin pin means personal identification number so your game pin is 6916307 and then you enter your name okay good we're getting a lot of people joining that's good Come on, everybody, and join in. Go to www.kahoot.it. Enter this game pin, this number, 6916307, and enter your name. Everybody join in. When the game begins, the number will still be in the bottom right corner of the game. So you can join even after the game begins. It'll be in the bottom right corner of the game. The number will be available to you during the game. would like for everybody to play so please join this is going to be a not a quiz this is not a quiz this is a poll so there are no right or wrong answers you just tell me what you think what you believe what you do I think you will have a good time with it. Okay, I'm gonna begin soon, so hurry up and join. We've got 80 people in the game. Change it back to your name. <laughs> Whoever this is, you you want to use your name, not the pin, okay? <laughs> you can go back and change it. I can wait for you. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and begin. And if you want to um, join after we begin, the number, the pin number will be in the bottom right corner of the game. Okay, we've got 88 people in here. That's good. 
That's wonderful. Okay, I'm going to start. So if you want to join, hurry up and join. Okay, I'm going to start. You can still join, though. If you want to write down this number, you can write it down. 691-6307. Okay, good. Oh, we have 91 people in here. Oh, good. You changed it from your number to your name. Good. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to start. I'm a cute person. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Okay, let's begin. Here we go. This is a poll, Vietnamese and United States culture. So this is a poll. Give your opinions. This is not a quiz. It's a way to discard, <laughs> to start a discussion about culture. And you see that the game pen is down here in the bottom right. So if you want to join, you can still join the game. Go to kahoot.it and enter this number. So you can still join the game. You can join now. You can join even after we start. OK, so there's no right or wrong answers. It's not a quiz. It's a poll. It's asking your thoughts, your opinions, and your habits, actually. Okay, so let's go to the first one. By the way, if you want to talk, all you have to do is unmute and talk. Or you can raise your hand in the camera, you can raise your hand in Zoom, you can talk anytime you want to talk. And I encourage you that if you talk, please turn your camera on when you talk. Okay, here we go. First one. When your parents are correcting you, what do you do with your eyes? Look away, put my parents directly in the eyes, close my eyes, or roll my eyes. Okay, this is interesting. Um, so um, you have uh, 30 seconds for almost all of these questions. So 30 seconds for everything. And um, you can see that um, people have different opinions. Okay, look my parents directly in the eyes means you look at them in their eyes directly. Look away means you look, you don't look them in the eyes. Uh, some people close their eyes and some people roll their eyes. Rolling your eyes is like this. Okay. Oh. Okay. Which is what a lot of kids do. Okay. So here we can see that people have different habits, different opinions. So, um, like this little girl is looking at her mother directly in the eyes in this picture. Okay, all right, so good. Now you can see that um, you can't see who said what, but in a poll, you can see <clears throat> the number of people who do these things. So 36% look away. 52% look them directly in the eyes, 7% close their eyes, and 6% roll their eyes. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go see what's next. How often do you use chopsticks? In English, we call these chopsticks. With 
every meal, almost always, sometimes rarely. Rarely means almost never. Okay, most people use them with every meal. Some people, a lot of people, 37% said almost always. 6% said sometimes, 4% said rarely. Interesting, okay. Which do you prefer? Walk, bicycle, motorbike, or taxi? Walk, bicycle, motorbike, or taxi? Oh, good, we got a lot of answers. That's good. 12% of 12 people said walk, 24 people said bicycle, 47 people said motorbike, and Seven people said taxi. Okay, so that's that's a diversity, right? All right, that's interesting. Do children wear uniforms to school? Yes, always. Yes, usually. Sometimes, never. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm talking about you and where you are. So um, if you're Vietnamese and you're in Vietnam, I would like for you to answer about your experience in Vietnam. Okay. Don't try to think about um, the United States right now. Just think about you and Vietnam. Okay. So 40% said yes, always. Uh, I mean, 46% said yes, always. 39% said yes, usually. 12% said sometimes. 2% said never. Okay, so that's an interesting um, diversity. Good. Okay, so remember, you're talking about you and yourself in Vietnam. Okay. Should people show their emotions? Yes, frequently. Yes, sometimes. Rarely. Never. <laughs> Should people show their emotions? Okay, well, that's very interesting. Okay, all right, you are all right <laughs> because you're giving your opinions. Okay, good. So 27 per, uh, people said yes frequently, 59, per, uh, 59 people said yes sometimes, three people said rarely, and one per person said Never. Okay. I think diversity is wonderful, and this is a interesting diversity. Okay, let's see the next question. How often do you eat at an American fast food restaurant? Often, sometimes, rarely, never. Okay, 
This is interesting. Okay. Eight people said often. 19 said sometimes. 41 percent. 41 people said rarely. And 22 people said never. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Um, I'm hearing some noise from over here. Okay. All right, isn't that interesting to see all of the different opinions? <laughs> okay, so, so when I said that I was gonna give you a lecture about cultural differences, I know that I can't tell you about Vietnamese culture, but you can tell me about Vietnamese culture, okay? <laughs> so this is a way for us to start talking about culture, all right? When should students leave their parents' home? At age 18, after college, when you get married, it's not necessary to leave your parents home. Oh, wow, that's very close. Wow, we got a lot of interesting opinions here. Wow, those are all within six points of each other, okay? Or nine points of each other, I guess. Um, okay, so 23 people said at age 18, 20 people said after college, 29 people said when you get married and 16 people said it's not necessary to leave your parents home. Okay, very interesting, very interesting. Wow, it's so close. You know, there's so many interesting opinions here. When should students leave their parents home? Okay. Should you consult your parents before you begin dating someone? In other words, should you ask your parents, is it okay? Yes, always. Yes, usually. Sometimes, never. interesting. <laughs> wow, that is interesting. It's pretty close. There's a lot of diversity of opinion here. 16 said yes, always. 19 people said yes, usually. 32 people said sometimes and 20 people said never. That is very interesting. Um, so um a lot of times there's a a change between generations like the children's generation uh, changes from the parents generation sometimes so maybe we're seeing some of that okay this is very interesting to me do your parents consult astrologers about dates times and the lunar calendar yes sometimes yes but only for very important events not usually or never Okay, wow. So most people said yes, but only for very important events. Okay, wow. 53% said yes, but only for very important events. The other answer is not so much. Okay. Interesting. Okay, very cool. I, th I think 
do, do you find that interesting? I find yes, it yes, of course. <laughs> I think it's fascinating. Okay. All right. Dating is usually less than mm, years before marriage. So do you get married after two years of dating, after four years of dating, after six years of dating, or it doesn't matter? <laughs> Okay, 58 people said it doesn't matter. That's interesting. I wonder if we looked at who had which answers, if that would make a big difference, okay? Because uh, 13 people said, hey, after two years of uh, dating, you should get married. 10 people said after four years. Seven people said after six years. Okay, interesting, interesting. There is more freedom of thought and expression in Vietnam than there is in the USA. Freedom of thought and expression. Always true, usually true, always false, usually false. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. Interesting. There is more freedom of thought and expression in Vietnam than in the USA. That's an interesting mix of answers. Most people said usually false, but 33 people said usually true. Okay. Um, only a few people said always true or always false. Okay, but that's interesting. All right. Which do you think is true at mealtime? In the USA, the young serve the old. In Vietnam, the young serve the old. You can do more than one answer here. You can do more than one answer. USA, the old serve the young, and Vietnam, the old serve the young. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, most people said in Vietnam, the young serve the old. But there were uh, everybody there, like every, all of the answers were chosen. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> this is just to get us thinking about cultural differences. How do you answer your phone? Do you say, Shin Chao? Do you say, hello or hello? Or do you say something else? Okay, so if you want to put in chat what you say when you answer the phone, uh, that would be good. Or you can just unmute and say it right now if you like. Um, in Vietnam, like, almost people say alo, that's A-L-O, when we answer oh. the phone. But it also depends on which person is calling to you. Like if my friends is like calling for me, I wouldn't mm -hmm. just skip the other part. Just like, what do you want? Or like, I don't have the, I don't have money mm -hmm. to lend to lend you. That kind okay. of okay. But kind what of. what do you say if you don't know who's calling? Uh, if if we don't know who's calling, we just normally just do alone. 
and that's it. Hello. Which, okay. Which is a very nonchalant voice, kind of. Okay, and 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 that's I mean that's how the French. Uh, yes, because yeah. yeah, because like the Vietnamese were colonized by the French, so yeah, there's a lot of French influence. Okay. Worse, the Vietnamese has uh, like the adaptation of the French. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. Okay. Um, actually, this is in a more formal way. We can say something else, like, um, excuse me, who's calling? That's a Vietnamese translation. Xin lỗi, I don't, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, right. Actually, it depends on the situation. Okay. <laughs> of course it does. But this is an interesting, um, an interesting set of answers, though. Okay, let's go to the next question. We kind of need to hurry now. You're riding the subway and you want to exit. What happens when the doors open? People get on, then you get out. Or you get out first, then others go on. Look at that. That's almost half and half. Almost half and half. Interesting. Well, this is something that you can talk about with each other after class is over, right? <laughs> or you can talk about it in your English class later with your teacher. For you, which is typical for buying a ticket? Do you line up like this or do you line up like this? This is very interesting. That's almost half and half. Okay. <laughs> Most people said like this, but a lot of people said like this. Okay, good. Very interesting. Is it polite to ask your teacher how old she or he is? Is it polite? Okay, these are very close answers. <laughs> Most people said no, but a lot of people said yes. Okay, which one means no? What is true for you in Vietnam? Okay, so uh, it was close, 49 to 32. Most people say this one means no. Some people are saying this one means no. Um, interesting, okay, very interesting. How do you feel about the sun on your skin? I like it. I try to get a suntan. I usually avoid it. I always avoid it. Sun on your skin. Okay, it looks like most people avoid it or always or 
or usually avoid it. Okay, a few people like it and try to get a suntan. Okay, it's very interesting. Okay, I'm learning something about Vietnamese culture. You are my teacher now. What is the best time to go to the beach? 5 a.m., 10 a.m., noon, or 5 p.m.? Hurry up. <laughs> okay. It looks like uh, 10 a.m. and noon are not very popular, but 5 a.m. is popular and 5 p.m. is popular. Okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. When you meet a classmate at school, what do you ask? How are you or have you eaten yet? In Vietnamese, not in English. That's almost half and half. Very close, very close. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to hurry. What is your advice to an American who wants to start doing business in Vietnam? Meet people online, meet people on social media, meet people face to face, show everyone how powerful you are. What is your opinion? Which one do you, would you recommend most? This is very interesting. Okay, very interesting. So most people said meet people face to face. A lot of people said, show everyone how powerful you are. Okay. okay, interesting, interesting. Which is most important to Vietnamese business? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, hold on. English, please. Which is most important to a Vietnamese business person who is meeting an American? How much money she or he has, appearance, power, or reputation and trust? Which is most important to a Vietnamese business person? Very interesting. Most people by a large margin said reputation and trust. Okay, but all answers were chosen. Which business people value punctuality, being on time, more? Vietnamese, Americans, or they're about the same? Business people, okay? Business people. Okay, huh. All right, that's interesting. Most people said Americans. Only six people said Vietnamese and 35 people said they're about the same. Okay, so this is what you believe and that's what I'm interested in. So good, that's good. Which business people dress more formally? Business people. Okay, business people. Vietnamese or Americans? Oh, 
Oh, that's almost half and half. Very interesting. Wow. Okay. When you offer your business card, you can use your left or right hand, or you should use both hands. When you offer your business card. Okay, most people said use both hands, but 37 people said you can use your left or right hand. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. When you receive a business card, you should immediately put it in your pocket or read it. Okay, most people said you should read it. Good. Which would you prefer when learning English? You have 60 seconds to answer this one. When you're learning English, would you prefer to stay in Vietnam? Would you prefer, like if you could do anything you want, would you prefer to stay in Vietnam, study abroad for 10 years, and decide what to do next? study abroad then soon return to Vietnam or move to an English speaking country and stay there. Interesting. Very interesting. Most people said study abroad, then soon return to Vietnam, but all answers were chosen. Interesting. Okay. What is most true for you? Money is power. Being cool is power. Knowledge is power. Life is not about power. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that says a lot, okay. <laughs> That says a lot. That's that's uh, like your personal philosophy. So that's very interesting and very personal. Okay, interesting. Wow. Yes and no always have the same meanings in Vietnam and USA business meetings. Business meetings. Oh, that's close. That's very close. That would, would be something that I would encourage you to talk about in your English classes um, later with your teacher. Okay. And if you're not yet a business person, if you're still at university, maybe you want to ask someone who is a business person. All right. Yes and no. The same meanings. How often do you wear makeup? 
never, seldom, often, every day. Interesting, very interesting. All right. Huh. That is very interesting. All right, last question. Which would you most like to eat? <laughs> Which would you most like to eat? Okay, good. <laughs> That's very interesting. All right. Very good. All right. Everybody, that was that was fantastic. Okay. Wonderful. Let's see. Let me see what what's next in the poll. Um I want to see what you thought about that poll. So, please give me some feedback and tell me did you learn something? Do you recommend the poll? How did it make you feel? Okay. All right. All right, so there's a little bit of yellow feeling. That's understandable. I want you to be honest. Some people would not recommend this, okay? And some people didn't think it was very good for learning. Okay, it gets like, uh, you can be honest. Okay. All right. Well, that poll was just to get our conversation started. We're going to spend the next hour looking at some other people's opinions. Okay. All right. Well, at least that way with the poll, we see that people have different ideas and different habits. And um, instead of me teaching you, that was you teaching me, okay? All right, so you give it a 4.5, which is okay. That's, that means that you thought it was okay, I guess. There are some bad feelings though. And I understand that. I completely understand that. Okay, let's do this. Does anybody want to say anything before we take a break? No subway in Vietnam. Really? Okay. Let me look in chat. Oh, there's a lot in chat. Um, oh, okay. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, people say hello. That's good. Hello, okay. Uh, no subway in Vietnam. Not even in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City? Huh, okay. Uh, that's interesting. All right, well, let's do this. Let's take a five minute break. Let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back and we'll talk and we'll watch some videos, okay? Yes. Okay, take five minutes. I'll put it in chat.
I'm sorry, but Pingeng, can you please mute your microphone? It's kind of annoying, you know. Come on. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for, yes, you are home, right? Yes. I'm Nguyen. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you for reminding me.
<clears throat> okay, everyone, let's get back together, please. Okay, so I just want to show you that um, since I'm the teacher and I made that Kahoot, I can go look at a report and see how many people chose each answer. So maybe after class today, I'll go and I will, I will put that in numbers and put it in a document so that you and your teachers can talk about it in class because that is definitely a good poll to, uh, to just start a conversation about cultural differences. Okay, I thought it was very interesting. I hope that you thought it was interesting. Even if you had some problems with it, I hope that you thought it was interesting. Okay. So, um, all right, so now I, what I'm going to do, does anybody have any questions or comments right now? If you, if you want to speak, all you have to do is unmute and speak. You can say anything you want at any time. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So students, if you have any ideas to share, any comments, just feel free to, to talk, please. Just so that everyone understands what, <clears throat> what I'm doing as a teacher is I'm not telling you anything. All I'm doing is I'm encouraging you to think about and talk about cultural differences because I can't teach you about Vietnamese culture, but you can teach me about Vietnamese culture. I know a lot about American culture culture in the USA, uh, but I don't know all of the different cultures in the USA, but uh, I've been around for a long time. <laughs> so uh, I've had lots of different experiences in the United States. Um, I was a German teacher. I worked in American corporations as an instructional designer, and now I'm an English teacher. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna introduce to you some of the things that I found online when I was looking for, when I Googled um, Vietnamese Amer uh, USA culture. These are some of the things that I found and that you can find too. Um, I, will, I will share with you the document and all the links at the end of class today. So don't let me forget at the end of class, I will share the document with you on Google Drive. But right now I wanna show you the first thing that I found was a lady from the United States and her name is Casey. And this is what she was saying about Western versus Vietnamese culture. Okay, so this is just one person's opinion. And remember, do you completely trust that what this lady is saying is true? I don't. Uh, I'm going to ask you to tell me what you think. So um, she, is a, she teaches English in Vietnam. She doesn't say what city she's living in, uh, but she's taught English around the world. Uh, so I'm just going to introduce these links to you. I don't have time to show them all or play them all. I just want to introduce them to you. So she is talking about 
small talk when you first meet somebody. She talks about family life, Vietnam versus America. So I'm not saying that what she's saying is true, but this is just what one American in Vietnam is saying about the differences, okay? She says that this person is saying no with her hand in Vietnam, and that this is the way people say no in America. So you had a different idea about that. And this is what her impression is about how Americans and Vietnamese feel about sun on their skin. So she was surprised when she went to the beach at noon and there was nobody there. <laughs> so you can, you can read all of this. Uh, this is um, how Americans feel and Vietnamese feel about singing karaoke. <laughs> All right. How people spend their Saturday night. This is just one person's opinion, but she does live and teach in Vietnam. Okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it looks like Americans and Vietnamese are getting along just fine. Okay. So that's just one person's opinion. Okay. And I will give you that link at the end of class today. Um, but the next thing I want to show you, oh, wait a minute. Um, the next thing I want to show you is a video. Um, let me get to the video first. Okay, so uh, uh, no, I don't use emojis or social media. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of social media because it tracks you too much. So no, but I, I am on um, uh, um, LinkedIn, but uh, I'm not a big social media fan. Okay, so the next one is a, um, it's a video by a young Vietnamese man who's living in America. Okay, I can't play the whole video, but I'm just gonna play you some of it so you can see um, you can go back to this later after class and you can watch the whole thing, okay? Oh, wait a minute. I got to share it first. Uh. <clears throat> he, uh, he uses a lot of um, American slang. I don't know where he is in the United States, but he says that he's from Vietnam. Okay, here we go. Hey, yo, welcome back. So uh, today, I just want to uh, make a, a little bit different. For example, I'm gonna tell you guys about the difference between my country here and America. So basically, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be fun since I already have my experience here for about over two years. And then we're gonna go and discover the differences. Anyway, number one, the school style. For example, okay, in America, students usually can dress whatever they want. But in my country, you have to dress uniform. And if you're not in uniform, you out. You cannot stay in the school. In the school, usually they have some kinds of uh, like specific uniform. So you have to dress that. Otherwise, there's... The teacher they won't allow you to go to school but in here we can be different you know uh you can rest whatever you want i can it's it's fr fr family friendly now i cannot swear because this is a uh, the video that i want to share about experience anyway so in here i can dress whatever i feel comfortable with and uh that's kind of cool i wish my country had that the number two emotion most of my country I mean Asia, we don't really show 
emotion, damn it. And um, my father used to uh, say that showing emotion is for... In America, when you are 18, you are over 18, you will start to do your old stuff, okay? And then you have to work, you have to have loan and study university. But in my country, usually, usually the parent will pay for the university and we will stay in our in a family house until we have a job or have a wife usually sometime sometime people stay in their house until they marry wife or the wife okay so um this is one person's opinion is he 100% correct? Well, uh, it looks like you have some different opinions than he does. Okay. But I just wanted to show you, this is a Vietnamese man, young man, who's in the United States. And you can go back and watch this whole video. And you can say, yes, he's right. Or no, he's wrong. Or he's right about this, but he's wrong about that. Um, <clears throat> but it's a good way for you to... Um, evaluate opinions and share your own opinions because your opinion is the most important <laughs> not his opinion not my opinion your opinion is the most important opinion okay now i'm going to show a different video and this video is going to be a British man and an American man, and they're just sitting on the couch, very casual, and they are talking about their opinions of uh, Vietnam and the Vietnamese people. Now, I have to say um, that, um, okay, so caveat emptor. These are two non-Vietnamese people who are talking about Vietnam, okay? They are not really uh, very nice. They are not very diplomatic, <laughs> but they are being honest about their opinions. So you might not like them very much, but I'm just gonna show you that this is something that you can used to um, used to start talking about people's opinions of Vietnamese culture or American culture or British culture. Okay, so I'm just going to play a little bit of this. I'm not going to play all of it because it's very long and you might not like it. Okay. So let me make, uh, let me double check and make sure that I'm sharing sound. Yes, I'm sharing sound. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest video of Vietnamese Bites, where we will be discussing the 10 <coughs> biggest cultural differences between Vietnamese culture and Western culture. So join us for a drink. So you can tell he's British. With me always is my good friend Jules. Xin chào. Okay, let's get started. So first off, Jules, let's talk about Vietnamese food and specifically their way of eating and the restaurants here in Vietnam. Mm, yeah, first of all, their staples are rice and noodles. That is pretty he's, much he's American. 85% of their meals. Yeah, rice and noodles are ubiquitous everywhere. You see at uh, Gong Tam uh, places, uh, which are basically you kind of pick and mix rice places. I go to these almost every day, uh, cheap as chips to get a bowl of rice there. The problem is I find whenever I go to these places is the utensils. So instead of the knife and fork we're used to in the West, they have chopsticks and a spoon. And if you get like a pork chop or something with your rice, you know, how are you supposed to even eat that? As a Westerner, we would want to cut it Right? But Vietnamese people will pick it up with their chopsticks and just gnaw at it 
from the bowl. And I, I generally find myself just sort of hacking away with the side of the spoon and not really getting very far. So, But the reason why they have these utensils is because um, eating meals in Vietnam and indeed much of Asia is very much a communal thing, sort of family style. So you won't order three courses for me, three courses for Jules, but rather a whole bunch of courses for everyone there and you have your own little bowl and you use your chopsticks to kind of pick and mix and just add things into your bowl at one. And you okay, so you can see that um, they're, they're expressing their opinions and they might be right, they might be wrong, they might be a little bit right or a little bit wrong, <laughs> but this is something that you can use to start a conversation about um, um, Americans or British uh, opinions of Vietnam. And, you know, your opinion matters more than their opinion. <laughs> But this is just the way you can start a conversation about that. And now, let me see, what am I going to show you? A different video. Oh, okay. So this is somebody who, um, he does not identify himself, but he claims to be expert on uh, Vietnamese culture. I don't even know if he is Vietnamese or not. Uh, let me share this with you. He doesn't tell me where he comes from. So it's like caveat emptor. Uh, do, is he Vietnamese? Is he not Vietnamese? He's going to be talking about business in Vietnam. So maybe you trust him and maybe you don't. I tried to find information about him uh, using Google and I could not find any information about him. Okay, so um, I don't, you, you tell me, is this uh, valid or true or not? Your business success in Vietnam depends on your cultural awareness and your adjustment to them. Today, I'm gonna to share with you five cultural differences between the US and Vietnam and what you should be aware of. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to skip ahead like a little Facebook bit. Like our Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, Make sure you see, click yeah, he's advertising And how you himself. can be extremely successful in Vietnam. Looking forward to sharing more with you right now. Okay. Make sure you check out the pop-up banner in your right-hand yeah, corner. He's advertising the himself Entity again. Group. Okay. Whereby, in order to find opportunities and business relationships, He's, you have to find an entry point to leading okay. to business opportunities and deals. So, while cold calls or emails to unknown potential leads are a way to market your business in the U.S., in Vietnam, conversations held in person are preferred over online communication and emails. Business trust comes with reputation in collective societies like Vietnam. People don't trust you until they see and know you well. To facilitate. Okay, so there is uh, one of the things that we looked at in our poll. <clears throat> so you can go and watch this video later. Uh, let me see, somebody put something in chat. Uh, there's a lot of people in chat, so let me see. As I know, the Americans are very good at expressing their own opinions. So I'd like to ask how the teachers and parents teach their children about critical thinking. Thanks a lot. Well, um, they actually, we uh, have critical thinking is one of the things that we talk to children about in school. Um, I think that um, Americans sometimes are not very good at critical thinking because a lot of Americans believe everything that they read. <laughs> and a lot of the stuff that's on the internet is just not true. So I would say, uh, especially today, Americans are showing that they are not being very careful with their critical thinking. <laughs> 
America's in a in a troubled time right now. Hopefully, we're coming out of that trouble. But um, no, I would say that Americans need to learn how to um, use critical thinking. Okay, I'm going to share another video with you. Um, this one is about American culture, and this is an American person talking about American culture. Um, the only thing is, um, I don't know who she is, and I can't really learn anything about her. I tried to find information about her online, and I can't find any information about her. So let's listen to a little bit of what she says and see if we believe her or not. The website is called Helena Daily English, and I'm guessing that her name is Helena. So this is one person's opinion. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing. This is one person's opinion. I don't know who she is. I guess her name is Helena. Characteristics of Americans and American culture. To help you compare and contrast what you observe of American culture and your own, mark the similarities and differences between your culture and what you have watched in this video. One, America is enormous, the third largest country in the world, with a population of more than 300 million people. Americans come in all colors, have all types of religions, and speak many languages from all over the world. Three, Americans are extremely independent, individualistic, and like to be different from each other. Okay, so um, this is a long video. It goes on for eight and a half minutes. Um, and some of the things that she said, most of the things that she says, I think are true, but some of the things that she says, I think are not completely true. <laughs> so this is one American's opinion about Americans. So we are all different from each other. Americans are very independent and individualistic. That's true, which means that we have lots of different opinions about everything, <laughs> okay? So you can't just take one person's opinion as what is true about the United States, okay? Now, I want to look at another video. Uh, or actually, I want to look at some facts about Vietnam and the USA. Okay, so um, look at this, the USA. The population in 2020, uh, the source is the U.S. Census, so it's a very reliable source. The United States has 328.2 million people. Now, here's a very important thing, population density. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. Population density, there are 36 people per square kilometer. That's not very much. So there are a lot of people, but the United States is so big that the population density is very small. Now, I looked this up. Um, information about Vietnam, the population in 2019 
was 96.46 million, but the population density in Vietnam is there, there are 291 people per square kilometer. Okay, now I'm not trying to say that the United States is better than Vietnam, I'm not. I'm, what I'm trying to do is point out why we might have so many cultural differences because the United States is a is a big country and it has a lot of people, but the country is so big that the people are far away from each other, which has which explains a lot of things. Like why do we drive cars so much? Because we have to go long distances to get to work or school. So um, in Vietnam, actually it's nice to have population density because then you can get where you're going quicker. And um, just so that you can get a, a sense of the size difference, this is a map that I found that shows how big Vietnam is in relation to the United States. Now, I think that this is accurate um, you could prove me wrong, but what I'm trying to say with this is the, the reason for some cultural differences is because, um, you know, Vietnam is much older than the United States, but the United States is so big um, that it makes for a lot of cultural differences. Okay, I want to talk about U.S. citizenship. Uh, this is um, the law, this is uh, Latin actually, but it's Latin that says, in our government, all persons born within the territory of the United States are citizens. So if you come to the United States and you have a baby, that baby is a US citizen. And the name of that law is Jus Soli. Jus Soli, it means if you're born here, you are a citizen. Jus Sanguinis is Latin for by blood. Um, so this is saying that generally speaking, an individual born outside of the United States may be a United States citizen at birth if either or both of her parents were United States citizen at birth. Okay, and now I wanna just show you this uh, map of the world to show you who has use solely and who does not. Okay, I can share it with you. So, the United States has use solely laws as most of North America and most of South America have use solely laws. Um, the light blue means they have use solely with restrictions. Okay, so Australia has use solely with restrictions. And in the countries with light blue, use solely was abolished. Oh, shoot, I'm not sharing, dadgummit. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to click the share button. So these are use solely countries, North America, Mexico, most of South America. The, this color means use solely with restrictions, so not completely use solely. And in these countries, use solely was abolished. In other words, they got rid of it. They said no more use solely, okay? Notice that in Europe and England, they do not have use solely. They have use solely with restrictions. Okay, so I'm gonna, you'll get that link and you can look at that again after class. Um, now let me go, let's see, what's next? 
I'm having to go fast and I apologize. Um, let me share this with you. Okay, let's talk about one thing that's a cultural issue in the United States. Um, if you are between the ages of 14 to 17, um, or 14 years, 13, three months and 17, you might be able to get a driver's license. It depends on which state you live in. Okay, for most states, you can get a driver's license at the age of 16. And I think in Vietnam, you can get a motor scooter license at 16. But in the United States, you can drive a car when you are 16. Now, is that always a good thing? Um, it, it sometimes is, um, but what I'm gonna show you is one, I mean, it's nice. It's, you have liberty and freedom, you can drive. Your parents don't have to be in the car when you're 16, you can be on your own. But let's look at some videos that show some problems with that, okay? So I'm going to show you a video, and I want you to know that it's very short, but it is, ah, um, it's, it's hard to watch, okay? So be aware that this is not going to be fun to watch, all right? Let me share with sound. Okay, this is a problem with teen driving. If you're texting, you're not driving. Oh man, did I, gosh, I didn't share. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm real bad about that. Let me do it again. I'm sorry, my fault. All right, now I think I'm sharing. Okay. How many letters? Five letters. <laughs> Just think about what am I doing right now? Smile. <laughs> Smile? Uh-huh. This is so easy. <laughs> if you're texting, you're not driving. Okay, so um, this is a problem in the United States because a lot of young drivers um, use their phones while they're driving. And it's a big problem in the United States, okay? It's a big problem for us. And we have to try to tell our teenagers don't text and drive, but they do anyway. I know because even my own sons do it, even though I tell them not to. Uh, but I wanna just tell you about why this is such a big problem in the United States. Uh-oh. Huh, well, that's odd. I'm trying to follow a link. Hmm. Okay, well, that video is not working, so I'm going to go to the next video. Um, it was working yesterday. It just doesn't want to work today. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so now I can share. Um, it's called distracted driving. Distracted means you're not paying attention. 
And so this is for from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, and it's telling, um, look at this, um, motor vehicle crashes are the second leading cause of death for US teens. Almost 2,500 teens between 13 and 19 lost their lives in car crashes in 2018. That's about seven teens a day. Okay, that is a big problem. Okay, especially for teenagers. So uh, just so that you know, um, yes, it's nice for United States teens to drive cars, but there are big problems, okay? All right, I'm gonna stop sharing that one. And let me see, where am I going to next? Okay, I'm gonna show you some of a video. You can go watch the rest of it later. But this is fun because this is Americans talking about American... Uh, stop. Okay, this is Americans talking about American accents. And they are all from different states in the United States. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> this guy is from Oregon, the state of Oregon. I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did, so I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop, and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most <laughs> Okay, so I'm not gonna play the whole thing. You can play the whole thing later. I'm gonna give you a link, but that is Americans talking about American accents. Now I wanna do a different video where, let's see, hold on. Uh, what other people think about Americans, okay? First of all, let's get an American to talk about Americans smiling okay this is this one's called why do americans smile so much and i won't play the whole thing but i'll let you get started watching wait a minute okay share screen okay she's going to talk about americans smiling about their smile Guidebooks explain to tourists that Americans smile to strangers a lot. So why do Americans smile so much? And why is that so strange to everyone else? Americans seem to smile even when there's not a very good reason to. When you see an American smiling, they might be feeling happy, confident, or neutral. Sometimes it's just a polite way to make someone else feel comfortable. Think service with a smile. Here's your receipt. Thank you very much. In other countries though, smiling for no reason can make you seem kind of dumb. One researcher found in countries like Japan, India, South Korea, and Russia, smiling faces were considered less intelligent than serious ones. His theory is that there's a connection between a country's level of instability and finding smiling stupid. After all, how can you be so confident and happy when the future's uncertain? That might help explain stereotypically frowny places like Russia, where smiling in photos isn't really a thing. There's also some interesting research that helps explain the other end of the spectrum, why Americans have stereotypically megawatt smiles. It turns out that countries with a long, robust history of immigration have historically relied more on nonverbal communication. Therefore, people there might smile more. In a recent study, researchers looked at the number of source countries that have fed into a country since Columbus arrived in the Americas. Places like Canada and the United States are very diverse, with more than 60 source countries.
Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that. You can go watch the whole video uh, whenever you want. I'm going to give you the link. Uh, but it sounds like somebody did some research, and The Atlantic is a reliable magazine. Um, so now I want to go show you something about, uh, I want to show you a different video about um, women being encouraged to smile. And some women do not like that in the United States. So it's kind of a, a controversial issue. Let me, <clears throat> let me go play this video for you. Okay. Ah, stop. Okay, now I can share. Okay, so this is an American woman talking to you about smiling and about what men do. As a woman in the world, you will be walking around and a man will just tell you to smile. A man, a strange man. And men don't know this is happening because most of you aren't the guys who are doing it. I think it's like four men who have made it their mission to make every woman smile and they hit all of us. It's happened to every woman. You'll be walking uh, down the street, not smiling, you know, because you're not a lunatic who's just smiling for no reason. No one smiles for no reason. And a guy will come out of nowhere and be like, oh, can I get a smile? Oh, you'd be prettier if you smiled. Oh, it's beautiful out, why don't you smile? Come on. And I. I always do. I don't want to, but I'm always just like, here you go. Because <laughs> it's a little bit rapey. Because I'm a little bit scared. If a woman was like, hey, why don't you smile? I'd be like, no, bitch, why don't you go smile and look into a mirror? But a guy, I'm like, is this the least I can do to not get raped right now? Okay, great. Thanks. I love being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just so that you know, it's controversial. Okay. So some women feel like it's unfair for men, um, oh, fast and furious, wow, interesting. Um, uh, so it's uh, controversial. Some women feel like they don't want men to tell them to smile, okay? Now, let's see what Europeans think about Americans, all right? Let's go watch some of this video. I'm not gonna play the whole video, but I will, Oh, hold on. It's hard for me to start videos and then share. Okay, so this is what Europeans think about Americans. And the first thing he asked them is, can you talk like an American? Okay, these are Europeans. Try out an American accent for me. Yeehaw! So howdy, partner. We're going down to do some shooting. Hi, I'm Ben, and right now I'm traveling through Europe, and I figured I would ask Europeans along the way, what do they think of Americans? Let's go find out. I want you to be as honest as you can, all right? Yeah. So what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Americans? Loud and loud. Loud. Is it loud? It's pretty loud sometimes. <laughs> loud. Everyone says loud. Friendly. Like nice. Good teeth. They like to drink beer. They're nice people. They like drinking as the Austrians. Enthusiastic. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Americans? Hmm. Superficial. <laughs> we like Americans. They are always quite cool. They like fast food we don't like that so much but when you are there we enjoy it i mean the stereotypes is like yeah the kind of fat and all that fast food they eat a lot of food like the portions are like really big burgers and coke food very fast i think of fast food restaurants <laughs> five guys i love five guys okay so of all the things about america <laughs> the one thing you yeah. can think of and i think of trump too donald trump trump <laughs> just like donald trump in it just <laughs> Everyone hating on him, or absolutely loving him. It's like one or the two. Yeah, that president, he's the craziest, craziest president I've ever been seen, man. He's gonna start a war in this world. I like uh, the Trump. Yeah. You do? <laughs> yes. I like it. What What do you like about Trump? He's um, mean about 
the world and about the situation now. You, you like him because he's mean? He's very racist. He doesn't really know anything about politics. When you see like Americans, they're really open-minded. They're like, most of them are really smart. And we can't understand that Trump is your president. That's a big laugh, you know. People voted for him. You get what you very voted for. Like, I know everyone basically in Europe is against Trump, but um, I think they needed a change. I just think that the two coasts dominate it, the, and there's so many people in the middle, they don't get heard and they're finally getting heard. I do like in America that everyone's kind of, if you're born there, you're American. And if you're from another country in, and you're moving to Austria and your children are born here, you're still like, yeah, I'm from Austria, but you know, my heritage is this and that. The America is the land. So you're hearing a lot of opinions about Americans from uh, people who are not American. Okay, let's go uh, look at another video. You you can watch all these videos after class. Uh, let me see. All right. Um, okay. Okay, so this is people not from America imitating Americans. Okay, now I, I can't play the whole video, but I'll just introduce this video to you. <coughs> I'm an American that's talking like this, kind of, you know, the valley girl-ish. Everyone is just so cheerful. Like, how are you? Great! Oh, hi, how are you doing? I'm like so excited. Hey. Hey, how are you, buddy? Everything's good. Hi, how are you? I'm good, yeah. Totally. Awesome. Howdy. Hello. Hi, how are you? How are you? Oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. Like, the Bahamas is like in Jamaica, right? Really? It's like, oh, I don't know, like... Like, literally, I can't even. Like, I literally died. As if. Seriously. Oh, really? That's so ridiculous. Oh my gosh, I love your skirt. Where did you get it? I was at the mall, and like, I saw this boy I really liked. And then he was like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my god! My god. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so that's people acting like Americans, even though they're not Americans. And there's, I think there's only one more video that I want to uh, introduce you to. And it is, uh, can you distinguish Americans? In other words, what, what do Americans act like? Okay, so now I can share this with you. Here we go. Oh. Mostly, yeah. Can, yeah. Mostly you can distinguish them. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, people from the United States. And America. <laughs> Americano. From accent. From their accent. Is the accent? Maybe accent. Maybe by an accent. From their accent? From the accent. I don't think we have accents. Other than accents. So, I'm mostly Asian. Yeah. Yeah. Fat. <laughs> White fat. Well, let's say usually they have a bit more weight on their hips. It's usually they're sometimes a little bit plump. Often a bit overweight. Bigger. In sizes. <laughs> Some Americans might be seem to be larger, you know. Not always, but sometimes. Macho Americans have like more muscular face. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I, I can differ Americans and Europeans from the accent only. Other than that, they look the same. Uh, I don't Maybe know. their behavior, yeah. 
They eat a lot of hamburgers. So if you see like a person in McDonald's, he's probably American. <laughs> yeah, they go to McDonald's. Even if they're in Japan, they yeah. go to McDonald's <laughs> they, they very do. often. They do. It feels like they're always eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, always. And sometimes they make their friends, they usually smoke and put out the smoke in the area where they want, wherever they want. 지울 때 우산을 우산을 안 들고 다니는 거. <웃음> 물통을 항상 들고 다니죠. <웃음> 네? 하고 돈잘안 쓰고. <웃음> 돈 없다 그러고. For example, when we go out uh, with Americans, I think they always want to play drinking games. They really want to, you know, make sure everybody gets really wasted and make sure everybody takes a lot of shots. I think that's a really American thing. <웃음> Maybe by clothes or fashion? Uh, from, uh, from the way they dress, they use bigger clothes. Yeah, they have loose clothes. Maybe they don't, doesn't care about too much what they wear. Think about sweatpants, big t-shirts, stuff like that. I don't know, they wear shorts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so that is the last video that I wanted to show you, but I did want to, uh, I want to give you, hold on, um, I want to give you this handout that has all of the links on it. Um, if there's another video um, that I think is uh, says a lot about the United States. It's this man, David McCullough, who is an author, and he's written a lot of very good books about American history. I like him. Uh, I like his opinions. And he, in this video, um, talks about the United States coming uh, through a time of trouble. Okay? He did it's in 2017, and he was criticizing the president in 2017. Um, and so here's a lot of vocabulary that he uses in this video. And it's vocabulary that you can use in class if you want to study, um, you know, American culture. Okay, so we're coming toward the end of class. Um, this is my email address. Um, if you want to email me, um, I will put it in um, chat real quick. Um, all right, let me stop sharing. Um, to everyone. Okay. So there's my email address. You can send me uh, your opinions. And now let me go to Google Drive. Um, okay, now I'm going to put in chat a link to the handout so that you can go visit all of those uh, websites and watch all those videos. And then you can talk about it in, um, in your English class, or you can talk about it with your friends. <laughs> also, this class will be on YouTube tomorrow. Um, not tonight, uh, because it takes a few hours for me to process the video and get it up. But, this class will be on the YouTube, my YouTube channel tomorrow. And so you can watch the video again and you can um, have discussions with anybody you want at school, at home, with your friends. And um, I hope that this has given you, given you something to talk about. Um, and you are the experts at Vietnamese culture and I know the United States culture. And we just want to be careful because just because it's on YouTube or on the internet does not mean that it's true, okay? So a lot of people are saying things 
that are wrong or bad or just ignorant, okay? So if we want to really have a better understanding of cultural differences between Vietnam and the United States, it's got to be a conversation where we talk to each other. So if you want to send me comments, you can do it in chat right now. You can unmute and talk, or you can send me an email. And um, also you can take this information from today's class and use it however you want to use it, okay? So talk with your teachers and um, maybe uh, we, I will have other um, lectures, workshops, talks um, every Monday and Thursday. So Thursday, we will talk about um, Vietnamese difficulties with English and how to overcome them. So every Monday and every Thursday until the end of July, we, I will be <laughs> in a Zoom class at the same time. Okay, so seven o'clock p.m. Vietnam time. Um, your teachers have the YouTube channel link. Um, let me see, maybe I can. Um, let me try to go to YouTube. Your teachers have the link to my YouTube channel, but let me see. Um, okay, I think this will get you to my YouTube channel. There are lots and lots of speaking classes and writing classes on that YouTube channel. <laughs> so this class will be on my YouTube channel tomorrow for you. Okay, so it's morning for me right now. After class today, I will put it up on YouTube. Um, does anybody wanna say anything right now? It's time to end class. Does anybody want to say anything? Um, I noticed that you're very interesting in how Vietnamese always tend to avoid the sun. So I think I'm going to share a little bit about that to help you understand more about the difference between Vietnamese and the U.S. Just a little okay. bit. Okay. I understood almost everything. You, you said you something about the Vietnamese avoid He's, what? Uh, tend to, the tendency to avoid the sun. And the sun, I oh, okay. Because this mentality date back before like, you know, we, us in Vietnamese culture, we tend to think that like with white skin or light tone skin is the representation of wealth. Because, uh -huh. oh, because only the, because because Vietnamese are a agricultural country. And you know, when you see how to work outside the field, you are you know, like a low class people, then you will have like a very tan, like dark skin tone. But but with rich noble and or uh, aristocrat with rich yeah. and noble kind of person. Okay, so these are the answers that you gave. Can you see this? 5% said, or yeah, 5% said, or five people said, I like it. Five said, I try to get a suntan. 35 said, I usually avoid it. 38 said, I always avoid it. But the, uh, the same thing is true in the United States. And um, one of the, um, one of the bad words that you can use for somebody who works in the sun in English is redneck. You can say he's a redneck, meaning he works in the sun, okay? And it also means he's ignorant and uneducated and is come, as comes from the country. So, 
that word is a pejorative. Do you, I don't know if you know this word in English. Pejorative means, it means something bad. Okay, so in the United States, if you call somebody a redneck, they might say, yeah, I'm a redneck and I'm proud of it. Or they might say, hey, you know, I'm not a redneck. So uh, there's different opinions in the United States about sun and getting sun, that sort of thing. But um, so I can't tell you about Vietnamese culture, but you can teach me about Vietnamese culture. So yeah, if you wanna um, send me a message about that, I'd be happy to, to get it. Anybody else want to have any other comments or questions? I know that you need to go get some food and some sleep. So thank you for your, uh, my next lesson is gonna be on Thursday, same time. And it will be every Monday and every Thursday until the end of July. And we'll have lots of interesting topics. Okay. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you, everyone. It's been an honor and a privilege for me to work with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your interviews. You <laughs> okay. You Great. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thank okay, you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day, Mr. Jack. Thank you. You too. Have a nice night. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, everybody.